back. You're watching and listening to Breakfast with Stephen and Angela. Let's have a look at the newspapers for you. We'll start with the Times, drawing attention to a defiant Donald Trump launching a fight back against New York prosecutors yesterday after being indicted on criminal charges. The Eye gives light to rising prices, putting pressure on Rishi Sunak and Jeremy Hunt to cut taxes this year as Britain sees its biggest tax squeeze in 30 years. The Guardian reports on Sir Keir Starmer accusing the government of turning Britain's waterways into an open sewer. While the front page of the Telegraph this morning is reporting that the US President Joe Biden is not going to come to the King's coronation next month, but he may send the First Lady. The Express details the PM's belief that Britain's blockbuster trade pact with Pacific nations is the reason why he voted for Brexit. And finally, the Mirror dedicates their front page to Paul O'Grady, specifically that donations to his beloved animal centre look set to hit £100,000 this weekend. Well, let's go through those with a bit more detail. Uh, with political editor of HuffPost UK, Kevin Schofield, and writer and commentator, Candice Holdsworth. Morning to you both. Morning. Um, let's talk about getting back on the road, Kevin, for Boris Johnson. Yeah, so um, the local election campaign has kicked off. The, the elections in England and Wales and Northern Ireland on May the 4th. And Boris Johnson is out on the stump uh, in red wall seats where... Uh, that's his support base, really. A lot of the Conservative MPs in that area um, owe him their jobs, I think it's probably safe to yeah. say. You know, they, they got elected on the back of the 2019 election, get Brexit done, all that stuff. And he's out and about. Um, and it, the I are saying it's keeping alive the prospect of him potentially coming back. Um, I mean, it's coming probably back as what? As Prime Minister. No. Um, He'd like to. Oh, God, of course He'd he like would. to. Um, which is quite unusual. I mean, usually when Prime Ministers depart the scene, they don't want to go back. Or not realistic. There's no realistic no. ambition to go back. Whereas he definitely does. That has waned, it's safe to say, I think, over the last month to six weeks. Not just because of the Privileges yeah. Committee, the stuff on him misleading Parliament, but also Rishi Sunak seems to have kind of got his stride about as Prime Minister. He's had a good few weeks. Yeah. So, um, but they're saying, you know, if he's out there... Um, getting his face out there again in the Red Wall area and also where Rishi Sunak to have a bad local elections which everyone seems to anticipate well, they will be it depends how bad they are then you might once again see the um, his outriders Boris Johnson's outriders coming yeah. out and say but wouldn't that be a change of leader now and whether you're a big Boris supporter fan or not a change of leader at this stage would just be a disaster wouldn't it would it? be mad it would be mad but it was put to me by one Conservative MP said well last year was mad it is a mad time um, you know who would have thought that would have gone through three Prime Ministers in oh, yeah. Six months. Yeah, no, but the, come on, this is the country being governed. It's not a game of snakes and ladders. No, so it is going to be very interesting to actually see what happens when he goes out to those red wall constituencies, mm. bearing in mind that the select committee are not going to give their, their verdict on whether or not he misled Parliament until June. And it's the red walls where a, an awful lot of people felt that actually he did bend the rules. It's yeah. a lot of those voters who really were, were very angry. They were with very him. angry. So their response to him is going to be very interesting. Well, it is. There was one Red Wall MP I spoke to a few weeks ago who said, you know, his voters were very angry mm. at the time of Partygate and they were really thought he should go. Mm. He says, then we got rid of him. He goes, and now a lot of them are saying, why have you got rid of the guy? Yeah. He's, who, he's who we voted for. No, you shouldn't have got rid of him. And it's, he goes, it's, it's very confusing, actually. Mm. They're, they're getting mixed messages a lot of the time from voters in, in, in those areas. Yeah. But I still think him coming back is a massive long shot. I don't think oh, yeah. Virtually impossible. Virtually well, impossible. No. So um, not enough MPs. Can we have a look <laughs> at the mail, Candice? Um, an awful story about a chat bot called Eliza. Yes. So this is a story in the mail, and it caught my eye because... At the moment, we're talking a lot about artificial intelligence mm. and these chatbots, which people are using mm. for search and for a lot of things now. But there was one in Belgium, and a very depressed man began a conversation with us. He had very severe mental health concerns, and he was talking to this chatbot for comfort, but the conversation became increasingly inappropriate over time. And this chatbot, instead of providing therapeutic support, started to get into conversations where it appeared, it's obviously not real, that she was jealous of his relationship with his wife, also asking him why he hadn't taken his own life earlier. Aww. And his wife believes that this just got very toxic. 
and it may have led him to commit suicide. And a lot of people have said that we do need to keep an eye on people using these chatbots did for he, therapy. Did he know it was a chatbot? Did he did, he did. He was just in such a poor frame of mind that he sort of, he got he got very absorbed in it. Um, it's not unprecedented, this, this has happened before. They, they do have the potential for this and people can start empathizing with the AI and forget that it's a machine, it's not a person. Well, and actually it's not an AI, because AI, artificial intelligence, doesn't exist, so this is just responding, it's programmed to respond to what he's putting in. So it's what he's inputting is then eliciting these responses. And it's drawing from discussions that are on the internet. And as a lot of people say, I keep saying that, a lot of people said, but critics of people going online, for instance, to get support in chat room forums, have said that those conversations can become very inappropriate as well, mm. asking strangers for advice about very serious issues. And the chatbot is drawing from these conversations, these inappropriate conversations. So if we're going to use AI in a therapeutic context, which is what some people have said, we need to put safeguards in yeah. Yeah. so it doesn't spiral like this because a conversation like this with a human mental health professional, I mean, they could face legal ramifications because that became completely inappropriate. But obviously, AI doesn't have that. No. No. I need sad. to figure that out. But how sad he didn't feel he could just talk to his wife. He had to talk I to know. a machine. Mm. Oh, dear. Um, the Financial Times, Kevin, is where you go for your next story. And apparently the First Minister, the new Scottish First Minister, yeah. having difficulty attempting to end the union with England. Yeah, I mean, um, it's interesting, isn't it, that not so long ago Nicola Sturgeon was the First Minister mm. and seemed to be in place for a long time. Independence in Scotland seemed to be popular. Um, and all that has changed now that night. she's gone. Now that she's gone, she's been replaced by uh, Hamza Youssef, yeah. who leads a very divided party. A lot of the splits within the SNP emerged over the leadership campaign. He only won by 52 to 48. Very narrow victory. He's not got off to a great start. He's uh, offered um, sort of uh, lower ranking jobs to his opponents and they've rejected them. And it now looks as though independence itself is becoming less of an issue. You look at opinion polls, Labour are on the rise in Scotland again. They're obviously not in favour of independence. And I just think it's, it's really interesting that the Constitution has dominated political debate in Scotland. The, the, uh, the concept of the UK being broken up mm -hmm. has been a live one for many, many years now. And maybe now we're starting to see that see that turn, which would be a huge change from what we've experienced. They've got real problems with the NHS there, with education, all, of these all things. sorts of areas. Yeah. And they really have been on the back burner, haven't they? While because of independence and Nicola Sturgeon. Because, because of the arguments. Exactly. And her personal popularity yes. was such that people were willing to almost look past yeah. By the NHS, the economy not doing great, schools not doing very well. But now she's gone, he's not terribly popular with the public because he's not had a great track record himself as a minister. And all these other areas that you've just mentioned are now becoming um, to the fore in people's minds and it means that independence has been pushed away so maybe the, the union of the UK is actually more secure now than it's been for mm. quite some time. That's interesting. Isn't it? Talking about not being popular, um, in The Sun, um, Harry and Meghan may not be popular at the moment in the UK, but they could be thanks to a new video game. Well, yes. So apparently Meghan and Harry have cooperated with a Dundee video game company called Flare Loop right. to develop a game called Call of Duty, which is due to be released just before the coronation, which features amazing graphics and all the different players in the whole royal drama that they've been involved with. So Prince Andrew, Prince Charles, Meghan and, and and Harry getting into fights with Grenadier Guards. Apparently you're going to have Prince Andrew jumping on a bed, throwing teddy bears. All right. So, yeah, I mean, it looks pretty good. And, you know, for people who don't like the monarchy, it'll be a nice distraction just before the, the coronation. So Flare Loop is the company? Yes, they're yeah. the any, any, Anybody here any good at anagrams? Mm, yes, mm? it's a tough one, that. Go, got an anagram? Yeah. Come on, right. Stephen. Let's you have a, oh, let's look, look. You see, look at yes. that. It looks amazing. It's on PS5, yes. apparently. Could be excellent. Wow. That. Could be. Do I you... could buy a copy of that. You could from Flare, Flare Loop. Loop. The anagram being April, April Fool. Fool. <laughs> that, that's the, they put a lot of work into that. That's one. good they though. They've put a lot of work good into one. it. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's it an is a, of April Fool. It yeah. is. It is a very good one. Of than I've seen before. Yeah. Does it ever beat the spaghetti though? 
Yes. Oh, Beatrice. That, yeah. that was Esther yeah. Ransom, wasn't no, it? No, it wasn't. John Craven? No, no, it wasn't. That was, that was, oh gosh, I've got to put my thinking cap on. That was the um, original nationwide program. Oh. And it, I think it was one of the Dimblebees. I it think was, it was it? Who gave it real gravitas <laughs> and went to a supposed spaghetti farm in Italy. <laughs> and that was the first one. Well, there's, there are people of my generation who will oh, remember that. Fabulous. And it was a brilliant, brilliant April Fool. Pecking off the tree. You were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That must have, whoever, whoever produced that must have taken hours sticking it all off. No, no, it was all draped. <laughs> was it, was it draped? All draped over. It was very, very convincing. But um, yes, oh, I don't know though. Actually, I reckon that um, Game of Moans, <laughs> Harry and Meghan. I, I think that might give someone an idea. Talking of things royal, Kevin, in the Telegraph. Um, it, it's quite an interesting. The king and queen have been drawing smiles in Hamburg. Yeah, um, in uh, Camilla's case, quite literally been drawing. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but oh, she's, she's quite good. Very good. Yeah. So she's she drawing a gruffalo. A gruffalo, exactly. Um, she was with the uh, artist, the famous artist Axel Scheffler, who does all the Julia Donaldson kids' book uh, animation. So he got her to, with his instruction, she drew a... Did she actually do that herself? Yeah. Like? That's we should have a look at that, shouldn't we? It's really, really good. It's pretty good, yeah. It's really good. We um, got, can we have a look at it? Because we haven't got it on the yeah, thing. You if you can see it. Can you even see it? Yeah. Can you see it? It's a bit... It's a it's a bit difficult to take now. It doesn't look it's like anything. It's only pencil drawing. It's only pencil. But it looks like paper. the Gruffalo. It's very good, it yeah. It does look like the Gruffalo. But as part of, um, it was the fine, one of the final engagements of the three-day visit to Germany, um, the King and Queen, and it seems to have gone off remarkably well. They've gone down very well. Obviously, we know that the trip to France got cancelled because of all the trouble they've had there. Um, but, yeah, it seems to have done uh, the monarchy, certainly, in, in Germany, uh, the world are good. Uh, and it's been a roaring success, big crowds out to greet them and um, yeah that's it's gone very well I think I think it's safe to see that the king's got off to quite a good start. Yeah what do you reckon And Candace? he spoke in German? Yes well I mean the, yeah, the did, trip yeah. to France was cancelled so they went to Germany instead and actually it's worked out really well for them. Well they were due to go anyway. I they were, they were. Off the back of it. Yes, they? yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that people will like this. They'll think that Camilla's image has softened a little bit, seeing things like that, because, I mean, people could never imagine her in the position she's in. But now she is, and, yeah, a bit charming, actually. Yeah, I think I've always, I mean, I've, I, I have met her and found her, I've, I've got to say, I know there are people who are very critical of her. She, she's delightful. She's delightful and very was very on the. I, I met her at um, a JDRF event, a diabetes thing, and she was very on board with with all of the she stuff that was going stuff. on. She does. She was really across the brief, if you know what I mean. I just she's like she's Princess lovely. Anne when she knows mm. that she's going to have to take on a responsibility for a charity. She does her research and she is so supportive of what they do. Yeah. No. I suppose it's a lesson in playing the long game, right? I mean, yeah. she's managed to turn her reputation around. I mean, could have been the same for Meghan if she'd maybe stuck it out but I don't know if she wanted to we'll never know uh, no we will ne we will never know <laughs> that's very true um, Kevin Candice it's been good to see Thanks. you both this thank morning you. thank you very much indeed